Yeah, good morning. This is Crime Page, but Bonnie doesn't. Uh, now, today we're coming to you from the Limestone Mountains uh, in the western side of the Dominican Republic, about, uh, I don't know, 15, 20 miles from the border with Haiti. I slept in a free parks cabin last night. I was about 15 feet away from some guy who kept coughing and breaking wind all night. Now I probably got the Rona. Anyway, let's look at a species of agave. Looks like agave antelarum, one of the endemic agave species. You can see it's uh, just wrapping up its life right there, you know? Just uh, just getting ready to croak. You can see the leaves are already senescing. But up there at the top of that massive inflorescence, you can see we got a full frontal uh, flowering going on, full frontal anthesis flower maturity look at that look at that spike look at that, that big uh, branch and panicle what a beautiful what a beautiful uh, sight to behold like a little orange flame on the hillside all right let's keep going see what else we got going on up this sketchy road by the shit is this look at this weird bastard look at it just a lot of photosynthetic stems but you got some uh, tiny leaves in there too yeah, I don't, I don't even know what this looks like. It's, uh, you know, from every node emanates, uh, you know, about six or seven inch to two inch long little branches. Has something been nibbling on this or what? This doesn't look, you know, this don't look right. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, we're back on a karstic limestone. And uh, that uh, color red would indicate uh, the presence of iron oxides. There's just something about the low-growing Zarek thorn scrub. The dry thorn scrub. Oh, this guy's got uh, quite an interesting uh, phyla taxi. It's like little plates. Looks uh, fibaceous or zygophalacious. Autophalacio. What am I talking about? Here we go. See, it's a, it's a fabid, huh? Legume phylogeny dungeon. Looks like a senna. Too bad no flowers, though, huh? Oh, yeah, there we go. There's some flowers. Holy shit. White flowers. Does it look... Actually, you know what? It don't look like a senna. There's the flowers on this uh, fabacious bastard. Flowers in the little bean bean pads. See these? Let's see if we can get one at full anthesis, at full frontal. I think that's the best we're gonna do today. Ooh, really wet my whistle. My interest is aroused. Do you love the limestone? Is it agave? Probably antelarum. I always like it when you get some trash, you know, blowing in the wind, kind of, it's like tinsel on a tree. The genus Croton is everywhere, and here's one of them. I could get you some flowers. Looks so filthy. A filthy euphorbiaceous bastard, poinsettia family. Now, I, you know, I... I've seen one down away that had flowers on it, but I don't think, I don't think these are, uh, I think they're all done. Anyway, the flowers are white, rather simplified, as are most crotons. Here's, here's the flowers on it, the croton. The croton, you can see those uh, maturing fruits, three carpeled ovary, you still got the orange stigma up top there, all dried out, all dried out and done. Look at how velvet, look at the texture it is, all velvety. Kind of looks, it looks like the, you know, in a way that uh, some of those old plastic fabrics from the 70s look. You have to, they had about, you know, two or three decades to dry out and break down. Ugh. Fucking plastic, everything gets old. Look at that flower, though. Look at that one. Look at that staminate flower. Oh, yeah. Look at that mountains over there. Look at those mountains. That's that uh, lake. Lago and Riquillo. So here in the south of the island, it's pretty dry. To the northeast, which is the direction that the uh, rain comes comes from, uh, it's a lot more. It's a lot wetter. 
it's a lot more music you got more forest here we're in we're kind of in the rain shadow of the mountains to our northeast so it just it gets it, it dries out a lot that's why you get all the cacti here all the xeric adapted stuff nice all the crotons you can see in that little mountain though you can see they, there must be a stream or something there it's a uh, it's a little bit greener a little bit more lush this guy look how juicy that is again he's got that same texture unrelated plant but they got that same texture you know all those trichomes and scales on the stems and the leaves and what this shit look at this guy's fruits it's like a little, uh, like kind of like a hairy banana, or like a, some sort of fuzzy dong. Alternate leaves, undulating margins, kind of bluish, covered in scales. Those flowers are just going off. Those flowers are looking nice. This guy, another, another crouton, another croton species. Delicious, look at this delicious Fabian. Mimosoidea subfamily. Look at this guy. Look at that, 10 stamens. About 10 stamens coming out of each cup looking like little hairs. Look at how tiny the leaves are too. God, I re you know, you really got to give it to the pea family, to the legumes, to what they're able to do in a goddamn deserts at the lower latitudes, at the tropics, Okay. You know, any seasonally dry scrubland, the fucking fabids are going to be there doing their thing. Might be because they got their whole rhizobium thing in their roots, you know. They got the nitrogen-fixing bacterias and what the shit. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Looks like a damn white caliandra almost. Oh, God, the needles are sticking into my fingers right now. Look at those ovaries. Swo swelling ovaries, maturing ovaries. There's the fruits right there. What a showy bastard. This fucking guy. Oh. This is going to be on my, the next show I do, it's called, it's called This Fucking Guy. Next episode of This Fucking Guy, this guy is going to be on it. God, I love him. Look at it. Oh, look at that. Looks like a species of vanilla. Just an epiphytic uh, orchid. Just kind of draping over this, uh, this plant right here. And then uh, over here in the understory, you can see uh, we got a species of uh, Tillandsia in bloom. Look at that. It's a big guy right there. Something was nibbling on that. That big uh, inflorescence. It seems to be hummingbird pollinated. You know, you got to go to the, uh, the humid, uh, humid tropical forest. Look at that thing. Things about to go off. You got some bigger ones over there, and that tree. They're they're everywhere, really. And of course, just the gave growing right on the limestone. And our old friend the uh, Bursera simaruba right there. Frankincense family. Okay, there we go. See, look, you got a nice, uh, nice up close money shot. I had the look. It's just that inflorescence. Look, it's just dripping nectar. I had agave inflorescence right there. Huge nectar source we're looking at right here. Oops, I'm I'm breaking this uh, peduncle off. Didn't mean to do that. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that guy. I just disturbed this guy at his buffet. Say what you know? In, in South Texas, at least all the old people go to Luby's buffet, but I think they they don't go there anymore because the Rona. They got it shut down. Okay. Probably even the ones that are vigilant anti-maskers are a little too freaked out to go to Luby's anymore. You know, all it takes is seeing one of your friends in the ICU uh, on a ventilator, I guess. Who knows? Anyway, uh, look at that. How's that looking? That looks pretty nice. Look at those. You got those six tepals. Six stamens, of course. Uh, multiples of three. We got a monocot here. And then you got that stigma right in the center. Look at those banana-shaped anthers. Look at how massive they are. And look at the, you can see the little globs of nectar. Just dripping off there. Look at that. You can see it on my finger. That's not, that's uh, that's sugar water from that nectar down there at the base of that uh, flower. 
Okay, and of course, they're mono, agave or monocarpic, flower once and die. And this guy doesn't seem to be producing pups. I have not seen a single individual of this species, agave antelarum, producing pups yet. Look at that. Look how juicy that is. Look at juicy. It's so juicy. Flower from the bottom first. Oh, yeah, look at that nectar disc. You see that? Look at that. It's how you get them in. It's how you get them to come in there. Wonder what kind of bats are pollinating these bats and birds probably. Oh yeah, look at that. We got a species of guayacum. Zygophilaceae creosote family. There's those fruits. You can see the fruits right there, and then once they open, the uh, individual seeds are all bright red, rather conspicuous, obviously bird dispersed. Just just draped in them. And these are the purple flower bastards when they are going off. Got a couple, uh, quite a few. I think we got a couple, quite a few species in uh, in uh, the mainland continent of North America. And off in the distance, you could see uh, the agriculture of the region. Okay, like any island with a finite amount of space and a growing number of Homo sapiens, the land's kind of getting beat uh, beat to death. But uh, nevertheless. You know, the DR uh, was wise enough to, you know, create a lot of uh, national parks and preserve a lot of the land. Okay, can't say the same for Haiti, unfortunately. But uh, anyway, uh, drawing your attention over here to this species of palm, this is a species of pseudo-phoenix. You can see it's kind of got that wine bottle shape to it. Okay, now phoenix, of course, is the genus of the Canary Island palm, the date palm. This is pseudo-phoenix because it looks... You know, with the with the leaf structure, it looks uh, from a distance kind of like uh, the genus Phoenix, but uh, I don't believe it's that closely related. But either way, I guess the locals tap into this. There's a you know a sugary sap that can be had, a sugary water that can be had uh, by tapping in to the uh, the xylem at the trunk. But uh, of course, in doing so, you kill the the uh, palm. So this is a somewhat of a threatened species here. Quite beautiful though. Look at that goddamn trunk though. Look at that. And then stepping over here onto the limestone, you could see uh, we got another Talansia up there. We also got a species in the genus uh, Selena Sirius. Another uh, wonderful epiphytic uh, cactus. Wonder what the fruits on these are like. You know what? I wonder what the flowers are like. I bet they're large and white, and they bloom uh, for a twenty, you know, for a twelve-hour period, uh, starting roughly at uh, sundown. Speaking of epiphytes, well, this isn't really an epiphyte, epiphyte since it does uh, germinate in the ground and it is rooted into the ground. But we got a species of vanilla right here. It looks like a vanilla barbalata. Yes, that vanilla, the same same genus that your uh, your flavoring comes from. Okay. Could see you could see that right there. You got the roots poking out, but it's you know it's got kind of a succulent stem, succulent photosynthetic stem. I don't even see any leaves on this, and I bet it's a real banger when it blooms. Oh, this is nice. Look, we got a we got a member of the cotton family, the Malvaceae. Almost, oops, I just broke the goddamn flower. Well, so much for that. Anyway, I can still show it to you. Almost looks like it's trying to be a silene. But, of course, you got that androgynophore in the middle with those uh, brown anthers hanging off. Nice calyx, epicalyx, those spiky breaks beneath it. And, of course, the uh, stellate trichomes, those, those little pokey hairs just covering the whole goddamn plant. And you get your palmate leaves, too. Rocky outcrops. Got it. You know, you, you really find some good shit on rocky outcrops, openings in the forest where you're gonna find plants growing that you don't see growing anywhere else. The agave seem to like it. Good enough for me. Anyway, who's this guy? Look at this. Look, you got a salvaform corolla, kind of tubular. Look at those anthers in there. Five anthers, five stamens, five anthers. Got a fruit mature in there. Still got that uh, style and stigma attached to it. See that? Petals fell, petals fell off. Look at the calyx right there, too. See the base of that calyx? This goddamn camera won't focus. I'm about to throw it over the cliff. 
You can see the calyx right there too. Fused sepals, fused petals, alternate leaves, kind of scabbard. The fact they're scabbard makes me it makes me wonder if it's a uh, Baraginaceae. I got that sandpaper feel to the adaxial surface, the top of the the top of the uh, leaf right there. Oh, look into my Corolla. Yeah, look at that. And you got a Pelosa Sirius up there, too. Could be Polygonus. Probably is Polygonus. It does look a little blue, though. Makes me wonder if it might be uh, Royenii. Royenii is the species of Pelosa Sirius. You got a, you got an, uh, you got a species of Pelosa Sirius to the east on Puerto Rico, too. They got their own species over there. Islands have apparently been separated long enough for a speciation to occur. Who knows which one came first? Look, you got a composite down here. It's not flowering. Looking pretty good, though. Opposite leaves. Heart-shaped. Something smells like reefer around here. What's that? Oh, yeah. We got good stuff going on here. Some good limestone and some good plants. Look at this. Rather a notable member of the composite family. Real stunner right here. This is a species of Gocknadia. Now in uh, the genus Nahuatlia. You got one uh, that goes into South Texas, Nahuatlia hypoluca, because it's got the bright white and fuzzy uh, abaxial leaf surfaces. The undersides of the leaves are white. Up here, this species, you could look at that. Look at that leaf surface. Velvety, white, and uh, the top is uh, covered in those uh, those little uh, trichomes as well. Those little trichomes and scales and what the shit. Too bad I'm not catching it in flower. If it's orange, kind of a reddish color, probably pollinated by hummingbirds. And I, I have seen quite a few whizzing by black and blue hummers. You know, woody trunk, kind of a kind of a large shrub. They get a little bit taller than this. And look at it. Look at it. So if you saw this in like a botanic garden, you'd know this was from a hot and dry area. Look at all those scales. Look at all the adaptation. The works of natural selection in an arid environment. Oh yeah, there we go. There's one flower, and you can see I gotta gotta hang on. So we'll see if I can get the goddamn camera to focus right there. Oh yeah, there you go. Now look at look at that uh, multi uh involucre right there. See those phyleries? Multiple series of phyleries. Those little triangular roof and shingle bricks. And then of course the whole goddamn anther column and a style are orange. Okay, so yeah, this is this is probably a hummingbird pollinated species of uh, species of guck. Not not a fucking camera's not gonna. You know this goddamn thing is really driving me batshit because it never wants to focus. It's all over the fucking place. There we go. Oh look at that! God damn it! I would dangle off a sketchy limestone cliff for you, you beautiful fuck. You know this karstic limestone is uh, not too good on the hands. So, you know, it's, I blame the rain. It's all the rain's fault. That acidic rainwater. Okay, the road's getting kind of kind of rough right now. But uh, look at a species of uh, composite. That white underside. That beautiful white abaxial surface. And, of course, just dozens of uh, little akines with their pappas poking out. You know, unfortunately, post-flower. But uh, you can see those uh, involucres still all crispy and brown. Look at it. Look at the texture of that leaf, too. And again, kind of scabbard. And then here we got a species of Passiflora. I wonder if it's an endemic. I'll have to check uh, the checklist and see. Uh, you know, I'd imagine maybe not, because these are these are probably bird dispersed. They probably got around. Who knows though? Might be endemic to the uh, Antilles. And in the uh, shady understory, we got uh, one of the endemic Opuntias. It looks like Opuntia Taylori. Little bastard just uh, growing out of the uh, karstic limestone. Got some vanilla right there too, just doing its thing. But there's some nice mycorrhizae, some nice fungus in that, uh, in that duff. Everybody just growing on the ground. Talanzias fell down, they kept growing, they're doing fine. You got a bunch more germinating on that, uh, that tree right there. Got your Talanzias, your agaves, all the monocots coming together as one. Then vanilla, of course, uh, 
just clambering its way on up uh, everything. Oh yeah, another species of Tillandsia. This one just growing on the ground. Get in where you fit in. Look at that, got that nice red, uh, that red color to those, uh, to that apical meristem right there, to the, that emerging growth. Actually, the apical meristem's down there, but you know what I mean. The brand new, uh, the brand new growth. And of course, just covered in those trichomes. Covered. That red color's nice though. And of course, when they flower, you got the little seed capsule split open there. Ah! And there, look, look at that. It looks like we got a tank bromeliad. See that guy? So he's just collecting water right there, going on the ground. I see one growing in a, in a, up on a tree too, but, uh, look at that. More, more weird composites with those white abaxial surfaces, with those white undersides. Look at the involucre on this. One series. Fortunately, it's not in flower. It does stink, though. It does stink. Look at how uh, linear those leaves are. Glass, glossy up top, and then uh, just covered in that white uh, velvet on the underside. Kind of growing scandent. Oh, uh, look, we got an orchid. You know your soil is rich. You know you got some good uh, mycorrhizal... Uh, Circumstances going on in that duff if you got orchids. Terrestrial orchids. Glassy. Look at a leopard print thing. Huh? Looks like some of those uh some of those thongs I got. Yeah, I could be wearing one right now. You know, just I just keep them on to, to gross out the squares. Not I'm not too turned on by them, just just mostly to it. You know, it's just a good icebreaker. Huh? Send the uh send the wafers running. Anybody who's too vanilla. Look at that. That's nice though. Just coming up in the understory. Oh, there's something tearing into my flesh. It doesn't feel good. And here you got a damn monocot. Just uh, an aerial monocot. An aerial grass. A scandent grass. Kind of growing like a vine. Very common here. This is this juicy bastard. Look at the fruits. Look at the fruits. This tree is everywhere. Glossy leaves, no hair. Alternating leaves, smooth margin. You got an entire margin right there. And a bark is notable too. Look at that nice bark. Oh. Oh yeah, Sapotaceae, Sideroxalon, nice. You got quite a few Sideroxalon in Texas uh, and Florida. Got those uh, axillary flowers just coming right out the stem right there maybe you got a little a little uh pedestal on each flower but on that you're just coming right out the stem glossy leaves kind of almost looks like just a, a plant you'd see in somebody's office or in a mall or something but uh i shouldn't say that in front of it i'm gonna offend it look we got flowers on that weird comp discoid flowers one series of phyleries no rays no ligules white corollas if you could see them in there they're tiny though. Just about finishing up. Look at this guy. You know, I bet this is an endemic. Oh, oh, that's nice. Look at that. That bromeliad can get big. Almost looks like an agave. One of the tank bromeliads probably collects a lot of water when it rains, but just fucking massive. Then you got your, your Tillandsias on the ground. Of course, that looks like a different species right there. And then of course your agave, probably Antillarum. Look at it. Look at a, look at a bursera. Look at a root right there. So fat, fat and juicy. Just growing on the karst. You got holes all with this shit. I bet there's a ton of caves under here. Look at this fancy bastard. Opposite leaves, spine-like leaves. You got a fruit and a flower right there. Red and tubular, pollinated by hummingbirds. And then uh, there's that fruit. Little spiny capsule. Fancy bastards, oh my God. What do you call that? It's nice. What's the underside of those leaves look like? Is it, uh, is it velvety? Nah, not really. But look at this guy. Growing on the rock outcrops, again. Little succulent guy. No fruits or flowers, though. What a bummer. Just growing right out the limestone.
He's got a little bonsai thing going. There's the uh, there's the pot on that vanilla. Look how bright red, very conspicuous. And got that, uh, but the stems, of course, got that uh, weird brown color to them, and the, the leaves are almost non-existent. See those little bricks? Look what comes out of this when I squeeze it. This gelatinous substance with those uh, little black, what must be seeds inside. It kind of smells, you know, it kind of smells like vanilla. Doesn't smell too good. Kind of smells like a mixture of vanilla and uh, like a homeless wino's breath. You, you know what I'm saying? You know what it smells like? Nice habitat, though. Look at that. The rocky outcrops. Oh, this is nice. Back into the composite dungeon. Looks like we got a species of Trixus. Oh, yeah. Dentate margins. Scabbard leaves. <clears throat> and there's those uh, capitula. There's those flower heads. Looking good, my friend. Then over here we got a... You got a lantana, too. Over here we got the Melpigiaceae. Melpigiaceous bastard. Stigma phylon. Stigma phylon. Look at those, look at those clawed petals. So indicative of uh, Melpigiaceae. Of the order Melpigiales. Same order as uh, the Euphorbias. Got your opposite leaves. This guy takes on a vining habit. Oh, he's just covered in the aphids, too. Bastards. Just might, might, might have to just squish him. Look at a glance. He's got those glance on the side of those uh, flowers right there. You know, you know the male piggy ACA? You know them, huh, you prick? This tricks us, though. Mutisioidea. God, I love a mutisioid. You got Trixus Californica in the deserts. I'm already losing my voice. Maybe that guy did give me Corona. I think he gave me the Rona. Look, coming off this woody branch. Looks like it was cut. Looks like it was cut when they bulldozed this road, when they cleared this road. Road's actually pretty good here. It's fucked up further up, but... But look, this Trixus has spines. It's got spines coming out of those uh, axillary leaf buds. Look, here's that passion flower blooming. The one I, sh I showed you back there with that uh, little purple berry. Look how tiny that flower is. Tiny. Oh, who are you? Look at you. <clears throat> Look like you might be solanaceous. Oh, very glandular. Very glandular, very sticky. Yeah, I'm losing my voice. I got the fucking Rona. That guy gave me Rona. God damn it. Maybe, you know, maybe I just run my mouth too much. Yeah, look at those, uh, look at those spines in between the nodes. Looks like he might have porocidal anthers, but I'm only seeing four petals right here. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that. This guy's juicy. Those anthers certainly look porocidal, or they just got big dongs. They're just, big, maybe they're just big dong anthers. I don't know. And you can see that little style, little curling, curling style coming out. So sticky. Yeah, my hands are sticky as hell now. There's the, there's the fruit. And a little, you can see the calyx still around it. Oh yeah, selenum for sure. Look at the fruits. Pop them open. You got those little flat seeds inside. Solanaceae seeds. Perhaps even in the genus Solanum. It's like looking, looking like little tomato seeds. You see that? All right, fuzzy goddamn mallows. I've seen so many goddamn fuzzy mallows on this mountain. But uh, this one, really, this one's pretty fucking incredible. Looks, like a, looks almost like a purple hibiscus. Purple cotton. I mean, that's a stunner. Looks so goddamn, so goddamn uh, canescent and covered in a fuzz. Look, look, look at those hairs. Look at those goddamn hairs. <clears throat> I checked for seed. It's got a bunch of little beetles coming out of it. Look at that, though. That's a fucking stunner. Surprised nobody's introduced this into cultivation. I wonder if it's a, uh, you know, it's probably a rare species, too. Could be an endemic. I don't know. Malvaceous bastards. You got quite a few more up there. How about that? Oh, there's the town dump. That's pretty charming. Look at all the plastic. But it smells even better when it's on fire. You know, I, I think it's important to, to note, okay, that when I'm done with this, I'm going to wipe some of this on the, the handkerchief wrapped around my belt, and the rest I'm just going to wipe on my pants. And I'm probably not going to wash these pants, 
I got another pair or two that I might uh, change into. But before I get on the plane and sit next to some phrases, and I hope I do sit next to some phrases, I'm going to put these pants back on, which by then will surely smell entirely like raw hell. And, uh, and I'm going to bathe in them, you know, marinate in them uh, for the eight hours on a plane flight back to the States, you know. Uh, but, you know, I bet, I bet they'll be able to smell me through the mask. That's the point. Sit next to some phrases and just, you know, just basically just bake them, you know. Bathe them in your scent. Oh, yeah, look at that. Food is just fuel. Well, maybe I'm trembling because my blood sugar's low. I don't know. <clears throat> you got the hot sauce, though. You're fine. That's all you need. Saltines and beans. Go fuck yourself.